All right, enough glazing. I'm sick of all y'all ReZero Glazer just like, this is the best isekai ever. Enough. I want to hate on it. I want some actual talking points, some great logic. People that are not afraid to go against the popular narrative and give some good insight on what ReZero does wrong, right? If you're going to do some ingenuous stuff and say, Subaru has no growth, this is a show for insults, like you're not understanding the show. But I do want to see from other people's perspective, this is called the problem with ReZero, Teleblue. The like to dislikes is not looking good, but hey, what do you expect, right? You're going to go into war. Let's see what he has to say. I think we've all had that moment where you're sitting down in a cinema with the boys or the mm. girlies hey, as the credits roll for whatever movie you were watching. Yeah. Absolute cinema. The crowd roars. Episode 15 at the end. That's how I felt as the credits rolled down. Yet you stay silent. You try to find a word that best describes the pattern of lights and sounds that were projected into the room. So, what did you think Peak. of the movie? The Peak. boys and slash or the girlies ask. But the only word that can come out of your mouth is Peak. mid. This doesn't just apply to movies and includes, but doesn't limit itself to music, video games, and anime. Oh look, that's the niche of this channel. I have many such anime that fall into this category, like okay. Demon Slayer, Blade of Demon Destruction, Kimetsu no Yai, but obviously you clicked on this video to see me absolutely tear apart reasons. So basically, his entire thing is sometimes you see all this shit and you felt mid about it. Demon Slayer is mid. Mid Slayer confirmed. Re -Zero. So trigger warning if your comfort character is Natsuki Subaru. But I'll have you know I drive a Subaru so this comes from a place of love. Mm -hmm. Nah, fuck that Natsuki guy. He killed my entire family. Now I know what a lot of y'all are typing about in the comments. Yes, I understand Natsuki isn't meant to be liked at the beginning, but like, I still don't like him after two seasons. I remember before I started Re Zero, I saw a clip of Natsuki in season two. Spoilers for Re Zero up until- so he doesn't like Subaru. The, the core of the issue with ReZero stems with Natsuki. Rare to see other people call Subaru Natsuki, but that's him. After two seasons, he still hates him, which is, I think, fair. I think that um, you don't have to enjoy Subaru. In the same way, you don't have to enjoy Rudius and Mushoku Tensei. You can still appreciate the show and love it for everything around it. Sure, they're the main characters and they're pretty much the driving force of the entire plot, right? And you're going to always interact with them, but there's so much more of the show than just the main characters from Mushoku Tensei and ReZero that, you know, even if you hate them, you can still enjoy the show. At the end of season two, by the way, I saw a clip of Natsuki saying goodbye to his mother, telling her there's something he needs to do, and then he leaves through a portal. Whether yep. or not you find the following words to come out of my mouth as reasonable criticism or not, I'm willing to admit that this itty bitty little spoiler may have influenced my expectations just a teensy bit. I'm Take sure care. we're all aware that Isekai is in the most prestigious genre in anime, with one of its cited issues being the lack of drive from the main character to return home. I spent so much money on these figures, man. If I were Isekai, I wouldn't be able to let them go. Let's see. Horo? Federica? More Horo? More Horo? <laughs> Three Hollows? Three Horos? I don't know who the one on the right is. I don't know, but I see Frederica. If I were Isekai, I wouldn't be able to let them go. I've seen a lot of Isekai circumvent this by having the MC die in their world or have the goal be defeat the demon lord so you So this guy's problem is with how Subaru refuses to try to go back to Earth. Like he hasn't mentioned anything about his desires to go back to Earth and you know all the stuff that happened in trial one, right? Subaru, you know, getting closure for himself. The parents don't really get closure because these are, you know, not real parents, but simply just Echidna creating them through Subaru's memories, but saying, take care, take care, I'll be back or some shit, like, because Subaru does not actively try to go back home, he is hating on him? Granted a wish, but what's different about ReZero is that Natsuki just spontaneously spawns into furry heaven mm. and Rook. celebrates. Totally to be fair, season one never really delved into Natsuki's- Well, he does celebrate because he fucking hates his life, right? He's always been looking for something somewhere else that he can't be judged compared to his father, who is just a Giga Chad, right? That's the entire thing that we learned in season two during the trials about his backstory, why he is the character he is in season one. To be fair, season one never really delved into Natsuki's personal life, which was both a blessing and a curse. A blessing because I didn't realize what a stinky poo poo he was, but a curse because he was still a wee bit stinky and I had no idea why. Like, I genuinely find it insane how anyone could just teleport into a foreign land and be happy. I knew, however. What do you mean? People that hate where they live, people who hate who they are, they've finally been given a second chance to restart over. That is the entire like purpose of Isekai. A lot of people want this shit because it's marketed towards an older audience who fucking hate their lives. Either they're stuck in a nine to five corporate job that they just cannot escape from. They want to have some sort of reality escapism. That's why a lot of the times Isekai characters are just like corporate salarymen. 
And then the other opposite spectrum of those that are unemployed, the neats that are doing nothing with their lives and feel like every time is passing by doing nothing, right? They too have this escapism fantasy to be transported and to have a different life. People like, for example, in Mushoku Tensei, remember Nanahoshi? Nanahoshi actually wants to go back. You know why? Because her life was fucking amazing back on Earth. Because... Nanahoshi is not a loser like Rudy's in the beginning or Subaru in the beginning. She had a she had a harm of dude. She has a great social circle. She's hot. She's pretty. She's outgoing. She's got many things looking good. And then she got transported and she's like, ah, shit, this fucking sucks. I want to go back home. Right. So I don't know where this guy is going with thinking that like Subaru not wanting to go back doesn't make sense. I think it makes a lot of sense that in season 2, Natsuki would be officially returning home to make peace with his parents and return to the fantasy world and save the day. Yeah, if you've seen the show, you know I set myself up for disappointment. Natsuki did not return home, nor did he make peace with his parents. It was all a dream conjured up by a kid. Now, why is she named after an Australian You do realize that this is a trial. None of this was meant to be actually a purpose to go home. This is meant to basically confront your past and get over it and do the next trials to... Get rid of the barrier. Like, what, what are you upset about here? Hedgehog again? But the echidna may be the only land mammal that has the ability to search for food this way. Okay, so apparently the Australian hedgehog was named after a Greek god. Earth lore likes to be a little silly with it, huh? I think the worst part of all this, though, was that Natsuki had a display of anime figures, too, and had no problems with never seeing them again. But the... I think that the anime figurines were great little Easter eggs that tells us that Subaru loves silver-haired waifus. Specifically elves, maybe. Of anime figures too and had no problems with never seeing them again. Like it kind of like adds on to his obsession with Amelia's aesthetic. Like the figurines, they're they're literally little Easter eggs to show like a lot of people question why the fuck does Subaru even love Amelia? Little stuff like this kind of adds more to that. But the second worst problem was that his parents were revealed to be the greatest parents in the world. This guy out of nowhere decided to become a neat and not gonna lie, I would have beat his ass. I wish I had the pay yeah, I would have beat his ass too. But here's the thing. While I can recognize that Subaru is a fucking loser and he's wasting his life, he also knows that. The entire reason he got into the situation is because his parents were too nice. Of course, there's a lot of fault with Subaru too. It's not the parents' fault. But this whole environment of perfect parents who want to be supportive and never confront him or oust him. Subaru wanted to be admonished. He wanted to be punished. He wanted to be told that you're fucking up and to be kicked out, right? But he couldn't even have that because dad and mom are just so supportive. I am very confused with the talking points made in this video so far about the whole trial stuff, the, the, the reluctance to go back home. Everything makes sense if you actually watched the show and understood the purpose of the episodes. Parents were revealed to be the greatest parents in the world. This guy out of nowhere decided to become a neat and not gonna lie, I would have beat his ass. I wish I had the patience of Natsuki's folks. Maybe I'd have one less dead body buried in my backyard. Jesus. Yet somehow this kid is okay with letting his parents live out the rest of their lives with zero closure as to what happened to him. If I were Natsuki ReZero, I'd do a complete 180 after- Like the whole basis of the argument here stems from Subaru being a shitty kid to his parents because he doesn't actively seek a way to go back home. Which is fair. That's definitely an angle you could come into this with, right? That's, that's fair. But I just feel like the diff supporting ideas, like it's all full of like misunderstanding of the show. And Subaru also, what do you expect? He's always in these fucking loops. Like it is kind of odd that he never has ever kind of like mentioned the prospect of maybe I should go home for my mom and dad. Maybe I should do this because he's too caught up with the bullshit happening and the constant threat that's happening in front of him because Roswell has been fucking him up all, all the way from seasons one to two, right? Maybe during that one year time gap between season two and season three, Subaru could have portrayed some, I don't know, like a different characterization where he expresses his desire to try to figure out a way to go back home. But for the most part, I don't really think that this is something that hinders the show, nor does it make me want to not watch an isekai. 
to the fake parents arc. I'd wrap up any unfinished business in Furryland and find a way home because if I can travel one way, I should be able to travel the other way. But for some reason, Natsuki just wants the half-elf cunning. And like, yeah, maybe I'd get it for Frederica instead, but it's not, is it? Look, I understand Natsuki was like depressed or something during his time on Earth, but I still don't feel like that justifies being okay with knowing your parents are never gonna see you again with re-zero explanation. Desperate for any clues, I googled if this was ever addressed in the light novel, and to my surprise, it wasn't. The closest thing addressing this was the author saying that Natsuki knew he wasn't returning home from the moment he blew Yeah, I mean, it's looking like this is a very intentional writing that Tape has committed to, where we're not really fucking around with um, the prospects of going home. Like in Ari Fureta, for example, in Ari Fureta, you know, they, the literal entire thing is him trying to get back home. There's some different isekais that definitely want to go back home. And ReZero, Tape himself has cl clearly stated that super subconsciously knew he would never return to Japan, which implies that like, you know, Tape is saying, I'm not really going to bother writing that kind of story because there's so many other things that I want to develop. And just because an isekai story doesn't have a character that wants to go back home, despite this whole, you know, talking points of him having figurines and a supportive mom and dad and him wanting to treat them better, I do not think that this is a problem. I think that it could be an angle of approach for sure. I understand the logic at this play, but it seems to be really grasping the straws or nitpicking on such a small point of the story that doesn't even matter because the story is so rich in so many different aspects because we don't focus on this little sub point. Flipped into the new world. New? New from what? G guys, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. The, this kind of sounds like bad writing. What's going on? Is it bad writing because one specific element of a show doesn't exist for you in ReZero compared to other isekais? Like, I don't think that the trial, like the bonds, the closure, the stuff that we experienced here back on the earlier part of the video necessitates this character to want or need to go back home. For sure, it's a bit odd that they never talk about it. But Tape clearly wants this to not be a point of the story. Maybe he's hiding it for the future. Who knows what he's cooking? But again, it is such a minor point to bring up in talking about the problem with ReZero. Why have I been turned into a markable plushie? We're watching an A1 Pictures anime? I remember in high school we would have sports festivals. Normally this wasn't a problem, but at this one school I went to, they always expected you to cheer on for your team. The teams were like Harry Potter houses. You get sorted into a random house upon joining the school. Yeah, this is the Maki and, uh, you know, Maki and Heroin, right? The soundtrack, right? I'm like, listen to this on like A1 Pictures, yo. Well, and those are the people you were destined to root for during the entire time at that school. Guess who had zero interest in sports or the people in the house? Oh, hey, it's me. All my friends were unfortunately in different houses and we were all segregated into those houses. The sports festivals for me was just an entire day of waiting. I had never spoken to the people who competed and I had zero passion for the sports being played, yet it was expected of me to fake my excitement. Guess who developed a disdain for sporting culture? You. You know, at least you could justify the forced sports culture at the school as a way to get people talking. To get them to interact and develop a sense of community. But I've also started observing this mindset elsewhere. There's this strange aura of superiority from people and a push from our culture to engage in what I see as capitalism back. All right, let's let's keep cooking. Is he trying to justify why he's different? <laughs> Is he trying to justify why he's like different? <laughs> Little fun fact: I used to be Mr. Team Captain of my sports teams. I was basically valedictorian prom king. I cannot relate to any of these loser experiences. I'm sorry. I cannot relate to these loser loner experiences. In everything that I was set out to do, I always wanted to do my best to compel everybody and to be a leader no matter what back in high school. This does not resonate with me, but let him build. Guess who developed a disdain for sporting culture? You know, at least you could justify the forced sports culture at the school as a way to get people talking. To get sure. them to interact and develop a sense of community. But sure. I've also started observing this mindset Monkeys. elsewhere. Monkeys! There's this strange aura of superiority from people and a push from our culture to engage in what I see as capitalism maxing. Clothes, mm. shoes, cars, watches, music, Pokemon cards. In particular, clothes, shoes, cars, and watches rub me the wrong way the most as they've been turned into a symbol of wealth. Nothing wrong with engaging in these hobbies, but that's exactly it, isn't it? It's just a hobby, nothing prestigious. These people don't- It's not that deep, bro. 
other people flexing their monetary status due to a better living situation, due to a different financial situation. If you feel insecure about that, you yourself are in this loop. It's your fault for perceiving this as an act of evil and that you're a lesser. For sure, society, like, what are we doing right now? We're farming videos, right? Does it mean just because a kidna gets more views than this guy, that a kidna is suddenly better than this guy? Not necessarily, right? But at the end of the day, our society hinges on status, trying to show value and show your success. And that is just the reality that we live in. And if you want to kind of break the system, right? For sure, you can go out and vouch for different types of political ideologies and to have a systemic movement. But at the end of the day, we're all playing this game together. You don't have to be so hooked into the game where you feel like you're a lesser person because there's someone, a different kid that's way more popular than you, that gets all the bitches, that gets the newest clothes, the newest shoes, and he's like first place in the sports tournament while you are sitting back at home, a loner, a loser, without any friends, and you see them being treated in a different light compared to you, and you're like, then what? Where, where are we going with this? Like, this is all about introspection and the world, the capitalistic society that we live in. Where is this going with ReZero? Don't truly delve into these hobbies to the point where they could be respected, yet people project more worth onto them than they actually deserve. When I started this new- Who are you to place value on what deserves something or not. Nobody does that. It's up to the free market. The similar way you can post a video and get this many views, these many people have decided that this is the value of this video. You know? You put your product out there and the market will decide whether or not it is compelling or not. There is no deserving, bro. It's all just fucking analytics job i always found it odd how a common conversation starter our experience went along the lines of you know that person i can't stand their music it's always weird to me how pretentious people can get putting down others for enjoy for sure that part i completely agree with right using these different like social statuses different metrics you know and bullying and like saying oh this guy this channel this guy suck this guy this that blah 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 that that for sure i can agree with right this gets very toxic when we caught up in like numbers and metrics bigger number better person i don't agree with that right uh, this part of the video for sure yeah i get it enjoying something this incessant need to prop up something they enjoy is better but if you were to ask them why they feel that way they'd probably provide an unsatisfactory answer sometimes or a lot of the times people do things they can't justify I've always found Natsuki's love for Amelia a strange one because he dedicates his life to her shortly after meeting her. <laughs> okay, we're back to ReZero. So, basically, this section is a nice part where he tries to incorporate his life story, building up into this society that values different things or not. Right? Yapping, yapping, yapping. And now, we're trying to figure out why Subaru loves Amelia, which is kind of funny because in the beginning, right, the, the figurine examples, like that's a little Easter eggs to show his aesthetic. But if you understood ReZero at a greater depth, okay, here, here, here's the anime only explanation on Subaru loves Amelia. He fell in love with a half elf girl who is silver haired because she's hot and he's a dumb horny neat that has a preference for silver haired elves. Not only that, she was one of the first people that actually showed any sort of interest in saving him in the first couple loops, right? And I know that these timelines aren't always, you know, successful. That's why Amelia is confused on why Subaru acts the way. But there's many moments in Arc 1 where Amelia and Subaru get along and Subaru thinks that he's in. A stupid, dumb, irrational, horny kid like Subaru who is riddled with many sins and his neat backstory, you could definitely assume why one would, can, one would irrationally fall in love with Amelia. Beyond that, we see an arc to the lap pillow moment, which pretty much solidifies it. And beyond that, it's just home run. Now, that's the base level anime only perspective. And that's still honestly not a very good answer, in my opinion, on why Subaru loves Amelia, right? The real answer, I believe, has to do with the like, deeper end game of ReZero. Because Subaru is, most likely, uh, Subaru is most likely a past lover of Satala, right? Satala and Amelia, the resemblances. Subaru is... My theory, maybe, even if Tampi has disregarded reincarnations, right? Subaru is a being that did spend a lot of time with Satala. There are these past memories that seems to just 
be missing if we observe and analyze the Shadow Garden scene where Subaru and Satala are talking to each other. There's this undescribable love that Subaru has for Satala. And if we take that into account, then suddenly Subaru being in love with Emilia is not just random scenes that we see in season one, but more of past memory, a subconscious that is very deep, right? That cannot be explained until we get more details of the end game of ReZero. In season one, when Natsuki started defending Emilia at the Imperial capital without having a real grasp of the world's culture and political system to then end up in a duel, yeah. He not just paralleled the part of our culture that I wholeheartedly despised, but he showed me the extreme end of its spectrum. Although, isn't that what humanity is at the end of the day? Yes, the whole point is for Subaru to literally be an egotistical maniac, to think that he's doing this for Amelia, but at the end of the day, he's white knighting harder than actual fucking white knights. The whole point of this is that Subaru has been always acting selfless. He's never been selfless. He's always been acting selfless. It's a selfish way of presenting yourself because at the end of the day, he doesn't want to help. He doesn't want to do this for Amelia. He wants to do it for himself. That's one of the most core, core fundamental parts of Subaru's problem that gets resolved. As we see in episode 25, in that scene between Amelia and Subaru, Subaru realizes, yeah, at the end of the day, I did just want to do it for myself, but I still want to stand beside you. Political system to then end up in a duel? He not just paralleled the part of our culture that I wholeheartedly despised, but he showed me the extreme end of its spectrum. Oh. Yeah. Humans are fucking retarded. We are riddled with these sins that overrides our logical, rational behavior. And that's very normal. And to see someone fall from his grace, if he was even on any grace, right? To fall down that hard and then to build back and to have a climactic pop off of subjugating the white whale into bed to the use, into saving Amelia, I think that shows something beautiful. Although, isn't that what humanity is at the end of the day? Just a cluster of people responding wildly at minor things. Maybe Amelia, to Subaru, is like a hobby that he'll love with no deeper reason for it. One that he'll defend and hold above everyone else for no particular reason. The two were just in the right place at the right time. Maybe Subaru doesn't need to be a character I agree with. Maybe he doesn't need to justify his actions. He just needs to be realistic. While he may get overly- I think he's very realistic. Like, everything that you just explained about why a dumb, stupid kid would fall in love with this hot elf girl and then doing this shit. Don't you think that this is the most realistic fucking main character in Isekai? It's mind-blowing how, like, so many people sees the flaws in Subaru and, like, don't think that he's, like, a deep, complex, realistic character. Like, he is such a flawed person, it shows you the average monkey. The fact that Subaru and Tape is able to show Subaru and such, like, to make these faces that you've never seen a main character make, when Subaru literally said, you owe me a debt that you could never fucking pay back. At that point, I realized, holy shit, is this actually the main character? It shows you a, such a realistic version of a 17-year-old need that shows up in an Isekar world, thinking he's hot shit, then getting the realization that, huh, at the end of the day, I'm nothing. ...be defensive, at least he doesn't shame others for supporting different candidates at the royal selection. And who am I to say he's doing the wrong thing? It's a real shame that Subaru's parents, for the time being, have not received the closure they deserve about this. That does feel sad. The parents never knowing what's happening. In my head canon, if we somehow return back on Earth, it's going to be as soon as we exit the 7-Eleven, the corner store before we got ported into ReZero. Yup, that's my head cannon, and mom and dad is going to be fine. Son, but at the cost of that, their son has gone off to a faraway land doing far more good than he could do ruminating in his room about how much of a failure he is. He may have started celebrating his arrival in Furryland without justification, but now he has friends to protect. He saved many lives and his relationship with Amelia has developed past simply just an extreme crush. The problem with ReZero? Mm. At the very least, this isn't one of them. Did you just fucking pussy out at the end? The entire talking point of the video builds up on Subaru's reluctance to go back home. Due to a bunch of points that I don't even agree with that I broke down in the video. And then we go into life story capitalism, selfishness, people are monkeys. Then he corrects himself by saying, actually, who am I to judge? And there is no problem.
It's because he's a new content creator. It's because this channel only has 314 subs. You're sitting on a fence. You baited with the title. But the title does say in quotations, the problem. You know? <laughs> I think, I mean, he is saying at the very least, this isn't a problem. As in like, who am I to judge? What kind of characters? I, I, I just feel like you need to deliver. I have yet to seen an actual proper criticism of Reezer that fucking makes sense. And maybe we could have gone at the angle of not wanting to go home. But at the end, you fucking bailed out, man. You pussied out. Much of a failure he is. He may have started celebrating his arrival in Furryland without justification, but now he has friends to protect. He saved many lives and his relationship with Amelia has developed past simply just an extreme crush. Yeah. The problem with ReZero? There is none. At the very least, this isn't one of them. Why did I watch this video then? Why did I watch this video then? <sighs> Here's the video.